it's a really safe, simple, and effective system. When the nurses are setting up their room before the patient comes in, they need to do surgical sponge counts. So what the circulator nurse will do is they'll have a badge, they will walk over to the surge count tablet, they'll simply press the start button, and then the system wants to know three things. It wants to know who's the opening circulator, it wants to know who is the patient, and it wants to know what sponges are going inside of this patient. They will scan in. You can see it's a visual as well as an audible noise that lets them know they've scanned in. For the patient ID, they can either scan that off the patient's wristband or off the patient's medical record. So that would just be a barcode, so we'll scan the patient in. And then the system wants to know what type of specialty is this. So you can see it, it scrolls up and down. We'll say that we're doing a, a thoracic case today, a chest case. So now that the system's on a count in screen and it wants to know what sponges are going inside of this patient. This tag right here we refer to as the master tag. This master tag knows all unique identities of the barcodes of the sponges within here. So the nurse will then scan that. It verbally tells them they've scanned in five sponges. It's an 18 by 18 lap and it shows them they've got zero scanned out and they've got five remaining. So what we teach again is, is that we're not replacing the nurse's manual count. We're an augment technology to help them with the, with the practice. So then after they've counted in all their sponges, they can stop scanning and this thing gets kicked to the back of the room. As these come off of the field from the patient cavity into what's referred to as the kick bucket, they'll go to the count out screen. We, we signify that with a red count out bar, meaning bloody bio burden used sponges. That's how they can differentiate between counting in and counting out. So then again, what the nurse is going to do is take those sponges directly out of the kick bucket. They'll be able to scan the sponge. I can now see that I've got five counted in, one sponge counted out, and I've got four remaining to count for still. Sometimes surgeries can last eight, 10, 12 hours long. If there's a shift change, I may not know if this sponge has been counted out yet or not. So the system's going to protect the nurse, which is ultimately going to protect the patient. I already counted this sponge out. I can't count this sponge out twice. That's one of the ways that false correct counts currently happen within hospitals, is a nurse counts something twice. So they know they have to keep scanning for sponges. Additionally, there's times where we're looking for sponges. We think we, there's no more sponges than the patient, the surgeon is telling us. Housekeeping, the surgical team's looking around. Sometimes up here it is under the surgical table. The system said unknown, alerting the surgical team that they can't count this sponge towards their final count. That's the second way a false correct count happens. False correct count is when a nurse thinks they have a correct count and they don't. So we know we cannot count the sponge towards the final count. So they'll keep looking until they find the sponge. So it tells them five, surge count complete. It wants accountability for who is the closing circulator. So we'll go ahead and scan that badge again. This is a closing review report. Staff member can simply hit submit and that sponge uh, reconciliation case immediately goes up to the cloud. And again, if everything's not accounted for, it's gonna send out an immediate email notification alert to hospital leadership saying there's a caregiver at risk and there's a patient at risk. Go look into this. And that's it.